Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctivet YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace a wheel bearing in a 2014 Cadillac SRX. Now this happens to be my mom's ride, so we're going to be fixing her up today. And we will show you how to replace the rear wheel bearing, the passenger side. Um, hers is a front wheel drive, so if you if you got an all wheel drive or you're doing the front, there will be just a little different because you'll have an axle. Like on the front here, you'd have the axle that you would have to push back. Pretty much gonna be doing the same thing on the rear here, minus that one step. That's gonna be the only difference. Now, let's roll the intro. I'll tell you guys the tools that you're gonna need and then we'll begin the process. Alright, so here's the tools you guys are going to need. You're going to want a pry bar. You're going to need a T30 Torx key of some sort. You'll want a socket wrench, a 14 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter wrench, and we've got a 7 8 socket here for the lugs. That's all that's used for. A torque wrench, and then another wrench, and that's what we're using for our. These are. This right here is for wheels and lugs. And that is all you guys will need. The helpful stuff here is to have some PB blaster, some AKA knocker loose is what I like to call it. That helps loosen things up. A little WD-40 help uh, lubricate a few things too as well. And we're ready to roll. First things first, get you a little flathead screwdriver or a pry bar and just gently lift up on this little um, cover and then it'll come right out exposes our lugs and then we're gonna go ahead and loosen those real quick I want to show you guys this I'm just pushing right here on the top is how we know that the wheel bearing is no good let's go ahead set her down loosen these lugs take the wheel off and then get to diving into more stuff all right so now we have got the wheel off the lugs off and they used a 7 8 socket now if you got if you got a four-way just use your four-way but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knocker loose again here and just go over all the bolts we're gonna have to take off which we're gonna start by taking off the brake caliper here so these two bolts squeeze that in there and then also we're gonna have to take this out so we got to remove the disc and then these bolts um, here will also come out for that is holding the brake caliper bracket so go ahead and squirt those and then that guy where the hose is at now is part of the wheel bearing a little further down it's really hard to see right down here is let's see if I can show you right there is another one for the brake and then here's another wheel bearing one so we'll spray it spray that and that will be for the wheel hub assembly and I'll take that whole thing out so now we're gonna let that soak and we will start getting the brake caliper off. So what you want to do before you take this caliper off, it's a little hack. And stick your pry bar right on inside there between the piston of your brake and your brake pad and just go ahead and pry that piston back and that will make your life a whole lot easier. You won't need the brake tool to compress that back you won't have to fight it it's done it's over with and now we go ahead and remove the brake caliper all right so on our caliper nut bolts here you can see i've got this one already out what you have to do is this is a 14 millimeter 
and this nut right here is a 17 millimeter so you need to hold a 17 millimeter on that nut and then loosen your bolt which is a 14 millimeter for both of them top and bottom once you get that done you're going to want to take your caliper and actually hang on two seconds all right now we've got the caliper um nice and secured up here it's not going to fall you don't want it hanging by this hose otherwise you're going to have troubles and want to do that later we removed the brake pads set them down there now it's time to go ahead and hit these two bolts right here so those two bolts right there are an 18 millimeter we used a 18 millimeter wrench to break them free and then use the socket to do the rest of the work all right so there we go once we get those two bolts out our bracket comes right off there and we're going to go ahead and set it down and now we're going to get our torx keys out and pick out the right size for that one and then take our rotor off which that one kind of feels like it but let's double check make sure it's not the size bigger and it is and that happens to be a size t30 so get your t30s out and let's go ahead and pop that bolt loose now with that off our rotor should just come free <laughs> We say that, but we may have to beat it off of there. All right, so there we go. Our rotor's loose. Go ahead and set it down there carefully. Yep. And now we can see the wheel bearing itself and the hub, the whole shebang right here. So we need to get to these three bolts now, and then we'll be able to pull this guy right out. All right, there we go. I got them all broke loose. They are an 18 millimeter. So again, we used our 18 millimeter wrench here. And now Dayton is using the 18 millimeter socket. I'm gonna get them all off of there and she will be free. All right, so this helps have an extra set of hands because those three bolts, once you get them out, your brake cover here and emergency brake will wanna come out. And so what we did is we just put a couple of bolts, they just slide right in, then it'll hold that up. And our wheel bearing actually came out pretty easily. We just had to wiggle it left and right, up and down, side to side, back and forth, and then it popped right out. And we can hear the bearing. I don't know if you can hear it on camera, but it is definitely bad. And the crazy thing is, is that it looks like it was replaced of 922 in 2020. Ah, it's kind of scary. Anyhow, we're gonna put the new one in. It's the same kind of process. We're gonna clean this up because that is nasty. Whoo, that's nasty. So we're gonna get a little rag, clean this up, put the new one in, and then do the same process in reverse. And there we go. We got the new one slipped in there. Now you're gonna wanna watch and make sure that you have the uh, holes lined up for the bolts all the way through and through and that is what we've done so far these are just hand tight we're getting ready to get the wrenches back out tighten them down hand tight with the wrench and then we will torque them down to spec all right so now we've got those three bolts torqued down it's said to do 125 however we ended up breaking a bolt doing so so we did 100 and they're good to go now. We're ready to put our bracket back on. I mean, our our brake rotor back on. It's probably hot. Ooh, yeah, probably so. And then we'll reassemble everything else. Spray a little WD-40 on there to help slide that puppy on. Now we're gonna put our T30 bolt back in. And here's our, nope, not the right one. Got those ones in T30, and we'll get this guy screwed back in there. While Dayton is working on that, I can put this bracket back in, slip it in spot, just like this. Grab one of these bolts, stick it in there.
Okay, that's tight. That's all good now. So now our new rotor, or I mean our new wheel bearing is in, the rotor is on. We're gonna work on assembling the brake again. Now that we got that bracket on there, it's time to put our brake pads on. This could be a good time to go ahead and switch your brake pads if you need to do that. Just like that, our brake pads are in and it's time to put the caliper on. So go ahead and we'll pull that out and we'll just slip it right into place there. And I'll grab, you have to make sure it gets over that and there. Then we'll grab one of those bolts, put it up top, put another one down at the bottom. And remember, we're gonna have to hold that nut on the inside there when we tighten the bolt because just like that, they're spinning. So one is a 17, and I believe the other was a 16, 14, 14. And then do the same on the bottom and we're ready to put the wheel back on. All right, so there we go. It's replaced. The wheel's not tight on here yet. We're gonna go ahead and remove the jack. Remove the uh, jack stand that's under there. You guys can see. Remove the jack itself. Put the car back on the ground. And then we'll tighten those lugs all the way, put our cover back on, and this job is done. So if this video helped you guys out, smash the thumbs up. Drop a comment down there. Give my brother a shout out for helping today. We really appreciate it. And we will catch you guys in another video. Have a great night. God bless. Click the red subscribe. <laughs> Don't ever give up, God is here with you Yeah, You are a child, nothing but love is true Just got it fixed in view, keep your eyes on the prize That's life everlasting, only through Jesus Christ He came to die